Good morning. My name is Adrienne, and I'm here to talk about advocating for clinical trials. As a survivor, where do we start? I am with the Endometrial Cancer Action Network for African Americans, and I have no disclosures. When doing research in cancer, there's always this tremendous challenge. No one else has found the answer. Maybe I will. This quote from Dr. Jane C. Wright spoke to me not only because she was a black female research scientist in 1961, but because she had the audacity to believe that despite all the challenges that she was facing in that time, she believed that she could make a difference. Her determination is why we are all here today. By developing a technique that became the cornerstone of precision medicine, she changed the landscape of oncology and clinical research practices, advocating the better treatment options for us. Survivors can be just as audacious. And I have a couple opinions on where we can start. We can start by speaking up about our experiences as cancer patients and speaking to our unmet needs as survivors. At age 45, I was diagnosed with stage three endometrial cancer. That was in 2016. And when I finished treatment in 2018, I learned of an organization that explicitly set out to hold space for black women to do just that, speak up. The Endometrial Cancer Action Network for African Americans is a platform for educating black women about endometrial cancer and building relationships through community and research. Ikana provided me with context I didn't have before. When I was diagnosed, I knew nothing about endometrial cancer, what treatment would look like, or what my chances of survival were. What I did know was that I felt alone in the disease, uneducated about the disease, and completely consumed by it. Become, excuse me, becoming a member of Ikana was, was a turning point for me. Inside this community of black EC survivors, I learned the meaning of words like advocacy and disparities and how I could have an effect on both by using the most powerful tool I had, my voice. For so many black women like myself, when we, when we read about our survival rates and become aware of the statistics around what our chances of survival are, we fail to realize that despite the unfavorable odds, we forget that cancer can't take away our force, can't take away our choice, and can't take away our voices. We can start by honoring those strengths that we already have, speaking up about survival rates, speaking up about statistics, and raising awareness about endometrial cancer research through thoughtful and intentional outreach. Let's speak up about being left out. We can start with teaching one another what we know about clinical trials and research in gynecological cancer and how not being a part of the discussion disconnects us from being a part of the solution. I have had the privilege of being a patient advocate on the NRG Uterine Cancer Corpus Committee since 2019. In that time, I have shared my experiences, my lived experiences, as someone having gone through treatment in order to provide input on study protocols and objectives from a patient perspective. This opportunity has afforded me insight and education about clinical trials that I would not otherwise have had. And if I'm doing my job 
as an advocate. It is incumbent upon me that what I learned from the collective experiences of these times, that I share that with you. It is a form of mentorship that we, we should rely on more as advocates. Every cancer advocate learning, empowering, and teaching one another what we know to be true. We can start with advocating to increase understanding about the need for diversity in clinical trials, clearly communicating that we not only see the lack of black and brown faces there, we understand the consequences of their absence. In 2022, the National Cancer Institute reported that black women had more than twice the rate of deaths from endometrial cancer and higher incidences of aggressive subtypes than any other racial or ethnic group. But that's not news. It was the same report in 2016 when I was diagnosed, and it's the same report that the NCI has been tracking now for almost a decade. And in 2021, the American Society of Gynecological Oncology found that while being a part of a clinical trial can save your life, the lack of partic participation in them can be tied to worse outcomes. And that's in some, or if not most, the malignancies of uterine cancer. The message from these reports are startling, but sends an equally stark message. We have to take action toward inclusion and diversity. It won't just be given to us. And while reports are being written about why diversity and inclusion matters in clinical trials, we are missing opportunities, real-time opportunities that matter, because that's how we're gonna show these communities that we care about them, that we need to serve them, or we intend to serve them in order to preserve them. We can start by defining who we want to reach in our efforts to increase clinical trial participation and then model the types of collaborative efforts needed to carry it out. In 2021, the New England Journal of Medicine studied the rollout of the COVID-19 vaccine and concluded that the integration of community partners at the planning stages of those trials lent to a transparency that vastly improved public trust. The report acknowledges that the enlistment of community-based clinicians and patient advocates drove strategies that ensured diversity, addressed accessibility, and highlighted the need for equitable distribution. Cancer may not be a pandemic, but it is a pervasive issue that mirrors the emergent needs of one. And it is, ju and is just as deserving as a robust plan to roll out clinical trials in communities that are undereducated under and under, undeserved about them. Simply put, more people need to know and need to understand how to talk about them in a relatable manner. As advocates, we have the, two, the tools to meet that need. Whether our aim is to replicate stakeholder relationships reinforce community, community participation, or relay results of clinical trials into relatable language, public acceptability and education about clinical trials as part of our treatment plans is something that is within our reach. We can start by maintaining transparency at the core of our advocacy because trust is the biggest investment we can make in advancing our cause. Our friend, Mary Dicey Scroggins, was an excellent example of this. It meant something when she spoke. We learned from her even when she didn't know she was teaching. She was an advocate's advocate. There wasn't one gynecological cancer community she didn't try to reach. She may not be here with us anymore, but we have to trust in the wisdom she passed along to each of us. 
So, speak, teach, advocate, reach, trust. This is where we start. Thank you.